I got the new stuff, you guys. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, here's what she kind of looks like now. This is going to be an unboxing, a build, and a paint. Only using those two kits. I was really happy with this, you guys. Welcome to... So anyways, here's the new box. Oh my goodness. Look at all this good stuff in here. This is uh, the directions. Yeah, you know, you would think with all of the kits like this that I've built, you know, in the last two years, that uh, this would come somewhat natural. Look at those barricades there. Now, I didn't get to those in this build, but I did get to that um, cross piece there, which is really cool. Yeah, anyways, you would think that this would be a piece of cake. Um, yeah, so here's the sprues. Look at the detail on that. Oh my God, I was trying to match that with those kit bash videos that I've just gotten done. I think it looks really close, but yeah, you get enough to do uh, six columns. And here's the platforms and little extras that come across with the railings and things. I am ridiculously happy with the way this detail on this is. And yeah, it looks like you're gonna be able to do um, one column smashed and then you'll be able to do a couple more, I think it's three to four more wall sections. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as stacking and things like that, um, I would recommend that you probably get another Zone Mortalis kit to uh, make it work. Um, if you wanna make double stack tiles. So anyways, I pulled out the tops of those, of that kit just for me to um, get gauge on things. The tabs on the columns are different than the ones for the, the regular Zone Mortalis ones. They have a, um, instead of a full plastic tab, um, it's a pair of, uh, pair of plastic tabs. Um, I found that that really helped quite a bit, especially fitting it directly on the Zone Mortalis tile. Um, and sometimes with the with the old kits, um, you know, it was hard to get it on the tile. You had to fit it kind of while the glue was still wet so that you had it molded correctly. Here's one of the wall sections here with the uh, top. So yeah, look at the detail on this thing. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. But yeah, as far as being stackable, it's not really, really available. So yeah, here we go. I'm playing around with the tile and different different ideas that I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to try to mimic, so what do we got there? We got one, two, three. I think I built another one for the end. Yeah, I did, okay. So yeah, one full wall section and uh, three uh, damage wall sections. I actually think I could have done a fourth, um, but uh, yeah, you get the availability to do uh, uh, three platforms. So I'm gonna put some of the door sections in here. And uh, But anyways, getting back to what I was rambling about earlier, um, these columns uh, glue without too much uh, messing around. I mean, you wanna check, check, double check always when you're putting stuff together. Um, this was probably the easiest door section that I've put together uh, long ways. Uh, usually when you get that bottom piece in, yeah, that piece right there, and then get them set. Um, the other ones were a little bit more touchy, you know, as far as it goes. Sometimes you had to pull them apart and re-glue them a couple of times. 
but um, this fit to the tiles a heck of a lot better. Um, so yeah, those that uh, the tops to those columns are the ones where you can stack it up. Um, it doesn't come with a flat. I suppose I could have put a flat in there uh, if I wanted to um, from the regular Zone Mortalis kit. Um, the next video after this is the one where I'm going to be utilizing all of my resources. I really wanted to build this one uh, just with that, um, just with the one kit and see how far I can go. Um, it doesn't exactly mimic so much the uh the box art um but you know i got close it, it's i'm really happy with this tile um it's a little bit more of an open tile you know standard l um but these wall sections are fantastic to add i so want to get a couple of regular wall sections so i can stack them up um and utilize them uh you know, and then make a double stack tile. Um, this is, yeah, this was an absolute joy right here. Um, this little set, uh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, you get those little, uh, just those little slot in sections. This could be used for just about every other kit that GW puts out as far as terrain is concerned, um, at least with Necromunda stuff. So I, I know if it, with those tabs that it has right on there, it'll link right up with um, uh, the uh, Gang Stronghold, the other Zone Mortalis tiles. Um, yeah, so I wanted a few extensions here just to go to another tile because, yes, at some point I have one more tile that I really want to do. I said I was going to do seven on this, and um, this is the sixth. I was going to do six and seven, but I figured, you know what, I'd do a little bit more in depth for you guys as far as the video. That's why this is a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, these pipe ends, these will totally link in with. Uh, with the original pipe kit, um, which you can't buy by itself anymore. I hope they re-release that because um, the pipes are very nostalgic of Necromunda um, and actually 40K terrain too. There's a, there's a ton of those. I mean, those original kits were made for <laughs> for 40K anyways. Um, you know, we, we're the ones stealing it. But yeah, that fit in really nice. I didn't have to cut the tile. Um, yeah, you get a couple of, uh, other, other crawl spaces there. So this is showing off my new, uh, uh, spinner. Um, yeah, we're going to be playing quite a bit with this. Um, really like the way this turned out. This is a nice tile. It's a bit basic. Um, but you really don't have to do very much with the detailing on this because these columns and walls are really, really detailed. Um, the painting's coming up here. I will uh, let you guys take a look here and then come back to you when we're at the painting stage. priming again. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out to you guys is 
And at this stage, while I'm doing this, I'm not sure it's all going to work, but um, I am trying to get to 4K resolution um, because I'm not the one in this uh, YouTube partnership that actually knows how to make videos. <laughs> I know how to paint and, and uh, well, I'm getting better, obviously, but um, yeah, no, Jay is the one that knows how to actually create videos decently. Um, you should definitely check out his one that he released on Wednesday. Um, I think it's the best video we've put out to date um, as far as information and other things in, in regards to Necrobunda. Yeah, here we are. We're at I, that uh, darkening shading uh, prime step. Um, totally adding with this terrain. Oh my goodness. It was th that that that's this step right here is made for this terrain. Um, because there's a lot of shadow effects that just come naturally because of the detailing of the terrain. But uh, anyways, um, getting back to what I was rambling about. Boy, a lot of rambling in this one. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to get 4K video for you guys, um, simply because the higher resolution is going to really show off some of the junk that I've been doing here. and. Um, for anybody really experienced, you can see exactly how lazy I am <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> my my uh, my hobbying. Um, yeah, there's there's a ton of steps that I use to get lots of things accomplished very quickly. Um, it, and I don't think speed painting is exactly the correct term, but there are a lot of details and things like that that I. Um, gloss over simply because of the products that I use, uh, the oil paints, the powders, uh, the poster work, uh, contrast paints, the air gun, you know, all that stuff. I do not recommend uh, the average dude that doesn't want to just commit to the hobbying like I have. Um, get all of that junk. You can easily replicate everything that I'm doing uh, with just GW, uh, just the GW line or the Vallejo line, any of the paint lines. Um, you know, you might have to get a few, do some crossover and get a few different companies to get the effects that you want. Oh my goodness, look at how this green is covering. <laughs> I'm so happy. Half of my shadow work is done at this point. Um, I barely have to. I know a little later on you're going to see that it looks like I'm putting a ton of oil paint on, but I'm totally not. I'm putting a ton of spirits on to push the oil paint around. Um, but one of the reasons that I really like that is because some of those... Uh, my patience level for one. But some of those details and stuff... Um, you can get lost on a lot of the reasons people um, kind of make terrain basic is because the more details there are and the more you don't know how to um, do the job um, to actually make those stand out and what needs to stand out and you know how you want your tile to look. Um, yeah, this gosh, Gas, I thank you again for introducing me to sponge uh, texturing. Um, this is another really easy step. Um, I sped up the footage here, but I mean, in real time, it maybe took me 15 minutes to, to do all of this. Um, yeah, here we are. Uh, contrast paints again. It's... Uh, little bit of sped up footage. I'm trying to get as close as I can in some of this. Once again, I'm dealing with a new video medium. So I was kind of staying away a little bit because I wasn't, I didn't want to blur the shots by doing close ups too much. Um, once again, hopefully this is where the 4K comes in. Um, but yeah, this is just regular. I, I think this is Gilliman flesh contrast paint. And then I use uh, snake bite leather simply to change up the eye viewpoint. Um, getting back to the other rambling I was making about why a lot of people don't put this much effort into terrain is because this really isn't that much effort. Um, this would be a quick sloppy paint job. Um, 
and that's kind of how you know I like it. I, I it, you know, a, a little cartoonism with a little realism. Cartoonism. <laughs> yeah, that's not a word. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, getting back here. I mean, this is just slapping paint on. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to be somewhat careful in the lines. But because of the other effects that I do, yeah, okay, here's something new. We're going to put paint direct on. And then what we're going to do is we got the brush full of water. And we're just going to keep adding water. We're spreading this out. Um, I use the golden fluorescent on this one. Um, simply because you can see how thin it is just coming out of the bottle. Yeah, a little bubble, a little stipple. So all that dries with a natural stippling effect. Um, but here we go. We're going to be adding the oils. These are thinned down already again. Um and that's really saving a lot because I basically, so what you saw me do right there with the acrylic product is exactly what I do with this oil product. Um, and you can see it right here. This is just, a, just I have it loaded up with, with uh, spirits and we're simply mixing the colors. Um, the concept behind this is you know, when you keep mixing all the colors, you're going to get black <laughs> at some point. And I like uh, describing using oil paints. I think I've come up with an app description. It's kind of like, I don't know if any of you have ever used any kind of uh, big saw or anything where you get a great big mess of sawdust all over the place. So if you add uh, liquid to that, it turns into a sticky mess, which is something you can use for your terrain. Um, that's how I got the sand texture concept. Um, but for the most part, you're adding thinner. And here we are. I wanted to show you another thing that you can do with the powders. You know, I overdid it right there. Um, but you're basically just pushing the particles around. And the more thinner that's in between, uh, here we are in the shadowing. This was stupid easy um yeah this is another one i know i sped up the footage here but th if this took me five ten minutes to do i'd be really surprised i have to look at the footage again i think it was eight minutes and 37 seconds um of footage that i did on this but it, it, there's very little shadowing to do um yeah so anyways back to what i was saying you can just push it and the thinner you push it one of the things with the oils is that the medium inside of it or the uh, the particles they keep their saturation even though you're thinning it down you're just spreading them out um, over a bigger area instead of condensing them all together i do the same thing with the powders the powders is just the dry medium going onto a wet medium and then and then uh, manipulate it. Um, it comes with practice. So anyways, yeah, here we are. Thank you guys so much for dealing with all of this rambling I have. This was a big ramble video. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we just get better. And once again, you guys, if you like everything, please like and subscribe.